Good evening and welcome back to Baptist Bible College here in Springfield, Missouri. My name is Paul Gilmore alongside Scott Staten. We're bringing you the second to last game of the evening as we have our boys 18 and under game against the Dash Spartans hailing out of Dallas, Texas and the Manhattan Chief hailing out of Kansas. The Chief wearing their dark blue with the kind of highlighter color trim yeah. And Dash are wearing the full white with the black trim and the blue lettering. If they were football, they'd be the Seahawks. And that's going to stay with the Dash. Manhattan, Kansas is where they come out of, and they are bringing in a gaudy record, 25-3. and three. Dash Spartans with a 26-10 and 10 record, but as we talked a little bit earlier on the mess, they started out really well but then lost a really key player for Dash, but they've still... Got a team that's got some high hopes here to try to get to the goal ball. First shot is a little too strong for the Chief, as that was Aiden Miracle. You gotta love having guys on a team with those kind of names. I mean, it just sounds like Miracle. Wow, three, nice shot. And that's gonna be Cooper Limes has the first point points of the game, and Dash takes an early 3-0 lead. Good hands from the Spartans as that's twice poked away. Kennedy Act with the rock. Active defense, turning into offense. And that foul is gonna be on the floor. That's gonna be against Eli Kraus, his first foul of the game. Carlos Kennedy, we saw his, I believe it was his sister yesterday playing in the uh, girl side for Dash and boy, he's got some speed. He just flew down the court there. and It was almost like they had to foul him or else They'd just be watching from half court because he, he just blew by everybody. They do inbound to Kennedy underneath the basket. He's posting up against a much bigger player. <laughs> he got it like that. He was not intimidated. Chief like open up in a man defense. And Kennedy lost it off the shoe. Frustrated with himself there. He had a good idea. They, uh, they couldn't get, they were uh, pulling a switch where they would go from wing to wing with their forwards, but uh, couldn't get anything to happen, so Kennedy tried to force something down the middle. And free throw line jumper for Kraus gets the Chief on the board. Pretty touch. Got to like when you got bigs that can hit that mid-range jumper there. It's kind of been a lost art and starting to come back, it seems like. And now another corner, Jay, no good. Rebound ultimately to the Chief. Biggs with the uh, battle down low, couldn't get the rebound though. And that was a great take from Steven McNellis, but unfortunately couldn't finish, and that's gonna end up with Kennedy finishing on the other end. So fast, once he gets the ball and releases, it's gonna be tough to catch him. Very athletic players on both of these programs as that's gonna be stolen away, coming back the way of the Spartans. And that was Bowers who took it away. Bowers got a great handle. And now he's gonna flip it up <laughs> with the English. Bowers averaging the senior, about 12 points a game, four rebounds, three assists, and man, he has shown off to already. And that's gonna be a foul in the paint. That little dipsy doodle play there. Used his athleticism, got up underneath and put some English on that ball to kiss it off the backboard. And that foul was on Limes, his first. Chief will inbound underneath their basket. And that's going to be another foul. That one's called on Bowers. So refs doing a good job of keeping it clean in this game. The Spartans are very aggressive. They're going to have to be careful about those ticky-tack fouls. Yeah, you like the aggressiveness, but especially early on, you just really can't afford to get fouls like that where you're bodying up. Just get close to them, but you don't have to bounce off of your opponent. And that was a great block from Kennedy. It seems like they're going to call the body on somebody else. Yeah, I think Kennedy had all ball there. He came flying from behind, but I think they're going to call it on Biggs, potentially. I, I believe they, they said 10. I don't think there's a 10. Oh, there's a 10 on the court. That that would be Nate Cannon, his first. Yeah, and he just made a motion. I'm not sure if that's what he meant, but he said he got hit in the face. So it's one of those fouls. I know when, when I used to play, it would get confusing because it seemed like you just were the victim of the contact, but you got called for the foul because you were on defense. And I think that's what happened there. Cannon was just in the wrong place and hit his arm. So the first free throw from Krause was good. He's got all three of the chief points. Cannon, going to try to 
get their offense flowing here. Oh, nice fake. Fake the pass to his right. Kept it, cuffed it, and laid it off the board. And the Spartans have gotten some great looks at the basket early on. They have a quick 9-3 lead. And on the other end, great lay-in for Cody Sherla. Yeah, he same kind of thing. He just uh, decided he was going in. Once he got his position, took his steps and curled the ball up and just dropped it in and comes away with the steal now. And that's going to be taken away as Cannon tosses it away. Now the Chief come fire up a three. And that's a big shot up and in for Cody Amarin. Nice shot. And he, that's uh, going to be thrown away. A beautiful touch on that one. And you can tell this Chief team, they haven't shown it yet, but, man, they've got some athleticism. And first substitution as Seth Kraus checks in. And he's unchecked in the corner, is able to feed it inside, up and in. Is Amarin once again, who's got five quick points. And it's a 10-9 to nine lead for the Chief. Back the other way. Let's see if they can answer. Apologies on that. Uh, programming note number two is Cody Miracle. Oh, oh wow. Speaking of Mr. Miracle, <laughs> he nearly Statue of Liberty dunked that. <laughs> he did. Even the official shook his head. He said there was not a foul there. And wow, they almost come away with the steal. And we've got two chief player on the floor. And we've got a foul as Bowers ends up on top of Aiden Miracle. Boy, he's got to be careful. They do not have a deep bench. He gets called for another foul as he dives on top of the chief player. And I think that's two on him. And we're barely halfway through this first period. And they've right now only got three players on the bench. So he's got to be careful. And that is another foul on Bowers. And it's in the first quarter. We've already got sweat sliding across the floor. <laughs> Where are the ball boys? We need somebody to go out there and uh, clean that up. It's going to be happening a lot tonight, it looks like. And great hustle nearly stolen away by Limes. It's going to stay with the Chief. And I think the ref is letting somebody know now that they do need a towel right at midcourt on the Patriot logo. I do know over on the left side of the court, they have some of those uh, – tools where they can wipe up. They, they use them in the college and the NBA, but uh, I haven't seen anybody out there to use it yet. Good rebound. Strong, except he threw it away. Ran it down, though. And that's going to be a quick timeout by Coach Cannon. And it's going to be a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here. And just want to let you know that this is a boys 18 and under semifinal game of the 7A bracket. The winner will advance tomorrow on Golden Wednesday. It's going to be a good one. They may have to face the uh, OKC Storm. Depends on who comes out of that game with the uh, Blue Knights in 7A. And uh, looks like either way, it's going to be a, a fantastic ball game. Lots of, uh, lots of opportunities for highlights, let's just say. That, uh, I thought we were getting ready to witness another potential sports center moment when uh, Miracle went up there. And I thought he had made up his mind. He was going to dunk it in the last second, just dropped it in there. You know it's good when the official just kind of smiles and nods like he he knew he saw something pretty impressive there. Speaking it's, of officials at Nationals, I was here a couple of years ago when that one ref <laughs> at Missouri State made the Sports Center top 10. Oh yeah, he was viral. I I had so many people ask about it and I happened to not be in the gym when that happened. My son was there and he kept talking about it and I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it was great, but it sounded like hyperbole and then of course I turned the TV on and there he is. <laughs> so <laughs> And that shot is going to be challenged. No good from Limes. Limes almost did his own statue. Wow, there. what a great pass. Oh, beautiful. Up that ahead was a, to Seth Strauss. That was a bullet. Loaded the rifle and made the pass. Wow, what a block on the other end as well as Kennedy has his shot blocked. And then the, on the other way, the Chief didn't know that the players were trailing behind. Comes back to the Spartans, and that was going to be a baseline drive. Stepped on the, uh, in, on the sideline, though. Yeah, Aubrey Johnson, who is in for the Spartans. <clears throat> we're, seeing, we're seeing two athletic teams just kind of go back and forth and just relying on their athleticism right now. And that ball is going to be tipped, but ultimately ends up in the hands of Seth Strauss. And the Chief are on a big-time run right now. 
They have taken a pretty commanding lead here in the first quarter. The Spartans need an answer. Now that's steal. stolen away by Strauss as well and then stolen right back. <laughs> Some high-flying action so far here in the first quarter. Yeah, it's all athleticism right now. And that time, Aubrey decides to take it in and gets the foul. Going to have a chance for an and one. Comes off the bench, Aubrey Johnson, and just strong drive. Muscles it up and in and plays through the contact and able to get the opportunity for a three-point play. And that foul is the first on Cody Sherla, who will take a quick seat. Checking in for the Chief. Is Grant Ameren. Free throw, bounces off the front. And, you know, he, he had an opportunity there. Not a bad touch, but unable to convert. And that time the lay-in is no good from Miracle. And then we're going to have a foul going against Aiden Miracle. I feel like we're watching a game that's being played about eight feet above the court. There's so many passes that are just being like thrown. They get a rebound or a block and just throw it, and they know they've got athletes that are just going to jump up. But the thing is, both teams have athletes, so we're going to have some collisions. Going to have to be careful there, but boy, they're playing way above the court right now. And correction, that foul was on Patrick White, number 24. And Kennedy has it stripped away. And several players on the floor. And we're going to have a jump ball. It's going to stay with the Spartans. Paul, sometimes your athleticism can be your worst enemy because you go away from the fundamentals. You go away from team ball. And I'm not saying that that's completely happened yet, but we are seeing a lot of, uh, it looks like individual drives, a lot of one-on-one, -on -one and not a whole lot of uh, offense in terms of teamwork there. And so look for that to change a little as the game continues on. And that time the ball was tipped and stolen again by the Chief. Pump, pump fake up and under, and it looks like Patrick White is going to the line. Got to be brave down there, man. When you pump fake and you see your opponent fly by, you know you're going to get clocked at some point. And uh, to be able to just still go up and avoid the uh, contact to the head and get the free throws, nice play there, good effort. And so that's the first points of the ball game for Patrick White. Foul was on number 14, Benjamin Donnelly. And you mentioned it, too, with such a high-flying game. At some point, you're going to have somebody up above you yep. slapping down towards you. Yep. There's going to there's gonna be some bruises tomorrow morning, I would say, after this one. Both free throws good for Patrick White. Another substitution for the Dash Spartans as Jeffrey Biggs checks in. I love it. We call them Biggs anyway whenever they're down low, and that his name is Jeffrey Biggs just, just makes it so easy. It's poetic in a way. It is. It's perfect. Now Bowers works the handle, driving baseline. He goes up, no foul. Kind of got stuck underneath there, a little too far under the bucket. And now the Chief coming the other way. That was going to be tough either way, but he gets bodied. They're going to call the foul, and they're going to call it during the shot. Yeah, he got bailed out there because when he jumped, he was kind of in no man's land. He was on the side of the backboard. He did not have anyone to throw it to, but drew some contact and able to get to the free throw line. And that foul is going to go against Kennedy. That's his first First free throw is up and good for Gabe Ameren. I've not seen the Chief before, but uh, I got to tell you, they they came, come in here and, and after watching this first quarter, they've they've got the horses to be able to play some of the bigger teams and the better teams in our uh, both of all of our classes right now. And we were talking about that before the broadcast, just how fun it is to have these teams come in out of nowhere, like the Virginia team from a couple of years ago, yeah, right? And just make a statement. Yeah, and you got to think if you're going to travel that far, you you and not that Manhattan had to travel so far because you know Kansas is not too far away, but uh, you're not going to make the trip if you don't think you have an opportunity for your boys to come out here and make some noise. And the Chief are certainly making some early first quarter noise as they lead 20 to 11, and they extend that as Cody Miracle puts like, in the basket. I'd like to know what his vertical is. He he just is smooth and just seems to be able to elevate. And that time, Kennedy is going to lay it up and in. <laughs> How did he keep his balance? He got pushed a little bit and was able to push that up and in. So after a lot of defensive games here at BBC, we're seeing some high-flying action now as that ball is going to be no good twice from Patrick White. And Bowers comes up and threads the needle, and he's going to get bumped. Boy, it seemed like White there, if he could have taken those two shots and split the difference, it would have been a perfect shot. But he just overshot it. I think both times he expected some contact and was almost amazed that he, no one was there. We're going to have substitutions now for the Chief. 
as Aiden Miracle checks in, as does Cody Sherla. Good break for them. They've been playing full throttle and built themselves a nice little lead here. So just about 30 seconds remaining in the opening period of play in this boys 18 and under 7A gold ball semifinal. Dash looking for some answers offensively. And that's going to be Bauer stop and pop. Off the back rim and in. I like his game. He, uh, he reminds me, I think he's got Morant's number. He plays a lot like John Morant, looking for the passes, but also very athletic and able to drive the lane, make his own shot. And great job from Kennedy stealing away what would probably have been a potential final last shot for Kansas. And that's going to be up and in at the buzzer. So a little bit of momentum going into the second period as it was a pretty significant lead for a first quarter. And instead, we go into the second quarter with the Chief leading 22 to 17. Back right after this intermission. When my body needs relief, I real time it. I'd like to introduce you to my knockout pain formula, real time pain relief. It's soothing lotion, it's rich in nature's ingredients and helps me manage discomfort day or night. Mmm, and it smells great too. From muscle strains to soreness to simple back aches and arthritis, real time it and knock out your pain. It works for me and it will work for you. Real time pain relief, it's a knockout. Back at Baptist Bible College here in Springfield, Missouri, my name is Paul Gilmore alongside Scott Staten as the Manhattan Chief have a 22-17 lead over the Dash Spartans out of Dallas. Chief continue to work the ball inside, and that shot is erased by Man. Carlos Kennedy. Great pass, good ball motion, but the athleticism and jumps by Kennedy there. Boy, Kennedy, guy's got jets. He can fly up and down the court, and then that time just... Great awareness on defense, able to knock the ball out on what could have been an easy shot. Kennedy certainly one of the better athletes we've seen so far in this tournament. Looking forward to what he's got the rest of this week. As that shot, no good. Offensive rebound pulled down by White. Ultimately going to be saved by Kennedy. End up in the hands of the Chief, and then we're going to have a foul. And that's going to be tough. That's either Kennedy or Bowers, and it is going to be on Kennedy. That's his second. Yeah, he, you like the effort, but, man, you got to be smarter down there. When you see that ball ended up in the hands, he, he had made a great effort to try to slam it off of the chief player, and he missed. And uh, instead of just give, giving up to the, the idea that the chief got the ball, he kept going after it, and really nothing good was going to come from that. And now the issue is that both Kennedy and Bowers, the guards for the dash, both have two fouls here in the first half, and now the chief are in the penalty. Yeah, that time... He, uh, the brakes didn't work quick enough. He tried to stop, and his momentum, he was going so fast, his momentum took him and uh, drug his feet. So now this is not the first time that the Spartans have seemed a little bit unprepared coming out of an inbounds as another foul is called, and that's going to send Aiden Miracle to the line. Boy, I thought he was going to try to match Cody Miracle's jump there. I had suspicions. He was thinking about a dunk, but decided to go and just kiss it off the backboard. Second shot. That drops in from the back of the iron. It's felt like the Chief have had a strong lead, but it's just a seven-point game. And nice touch. Yeah, great floater from Aubrey Johnson for his second field goal. And that time, Kennedy steals it, nearly keeps it inbounds. That was almost like a cornerback interception. <laughs> it was. He wouldn't, even had two hands on it. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, he, he plays another sport. That was definitely defensive back material there. And I would certainly peg him for track and field as well. Yeah, no joke. Good look inside to Patrick White, who can't finish. Biggs. One-on-one on one the other way for Bowers. Nice Euro step. A little too strong. And now the Chief have an advantage. Coming back the other way. Stop and pop is up and no good. All the way kicked back out to the top. 
Miracle, stop and pop, short, and Biggs comes down with the rebound. Yeah, Kennedy that, coming the other way. That shot looked like it was going to be good, but it, it was almost like he got a hitch in it right at the last second. His guide hand almost pulled the ball back too much. And now Kennedy working the one-on-one, -on -one, looking for the advantage. Inside the bigs, uses his body a little too strong. And now on the backside, the ball was tipped and still ends up in the hands of the Chief, and that's going to be up and good for Aiden Miracle. Nice control of the body there as he floated up and put it in. Spin move from Kennedy, good vision to find Johnson for the three. Boy, he hit. Johnson has really come in and made an impact. Great job. He's driven the lane. He's made some strong shots, and then that outside jumper. And that shot is going to be up and no good, but a foul called on Aubrey Johnson. That's his second. Tough for him because he really was the help defense there, but he came across the lane, and he ended up drawing the foul, even though it wasn't his primary uh, opponent that he was supposed to be guarding there. But, boy, he's he's shown something. He's, he's muscled it up down low, and then nice touch on that three-pointer. And the Chief now have been able to get the ball inside almost at will as Sherla hits the first free throw. So that will be something to monitor as the game goes on, especially with maybe not a size advantage, but a height advantage for the Chief. Absolutely, and it's 9-4 nine, nine on team fouls. They've got to be careful. Again, they like a lot of teams that come here. You don't always have your full roster, and we mentioned they already lost perhaps their best player in a pretty unique situation uh, to be able to go on to play in the NCAA tournament. He's in college now, but... Uh, they uh, have done a great job of keeping this season afloat and winning 26 games. So you know they've got the uh, potential there, just don't have a very deep bench right now, just eight players on their roster. And now coming the other way is Limes. He's going to kick it back out top to Kennedy, who splits the D and floats it up and in. Boy, he just sliced through there like a knife in hot butter. It was a nice move. And now Great that's double-digit points for Kennedy. He's at 10 here in the first half and still five and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Great control. He can kick the speed in when he needs to, but he can also slow it down, stop it, and make some nice moves. Three-pointer, nothing but net for Patrick White. Unable to get a couple of those early layups. That time he knocks in a three-pointer. <laughs> you know what it looked like there? They were battling. It's going to be a jump ball, but it looked like uh, – Kennedy and Kraus were almost playing Australian rules football, rules football, where they both had it and were just kind of wrestling to see who could come away with it. Now Bowers comes the other way. Johnson finds Biggs. Kicking it back out top to Bowers. Steps into the three. That's going to be short. Needed Patrick one, White gets it up ahead. Needed one step in, in there, excuse me, and he would have been great on that one. Nice offensive putback up and in by Sherla. Back the other way. And Bauer's a little too strong. He's had a couple of layups like that. Can tell he's getting a little flustered by that. And instead, coming back the other way, the Chief drive baseline, put it up, and that's going to be a travel. Initially, it looked like the ref was going to maybe call a blocking call, and then he turned and looked to the crowd <laughs> and then came back to signal the travel. Yeah, I'm wondering if he had a fan, like, yell, uh, the, the, try to make the call for him, and he was kind of pausing to be like, I, I got this, I got this. I don't think the fans would ever try and influence no, the referees. No, right, especially in the National Christian Homeschool Basketball Championships. Three-pointer no good from Limes. Now coming back the other way, Kennedy with the steal. He's on the breakaway. I don't think anybody's going to be able to catch him as he lays it up and in. That was a great steal. I don't know how he came away with that ball and was able just to smoothly cut between those two players. They look up, and all of a sudden, they just see the back of number one's jersey. Good hands again. And that three-pointer is going to be up and a little short. And we're going to have an offensive foul going the other way. Yeah, 34. He was fighting down low. Eli Krause looked like he maybe pushed in the back of, not sure if that was Johnson or Kennedy that he pushed. And so that foul was called on him, fifth team foul. So Kennedy takes a seat. Not only was no one from the Chief going to catch him on that breakaway, I don't know of many people here at this tournament that would have caught him on that breakaway. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we could even expand that. I don't really know anyone personally that could ever catch him. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's unreal. A lot of speed and just good, good control too. And now Bowers on the drive, loses control, and he trips and falls, and they're going to call that a travel. 
Boy, that can knock the wind out of you. He landed, that ball was just right underneath his sternum, it looked like, and that's tough. You'd think it'd break your fall, but it, it actually is almost worse than hitting the floor. Right in that solar plex, and now the ref's coming to have a word with the score table. As we've got the drum section going right across the way. Yeah, not sure what happened there. Definitely said something over to the uh, scores table to get something clarified. So the Chief work it inside. That's going to be a nice up and under for Cody Miracle. Man, he's got some jumps. He got inside there and just worked his way around to get himself open for a bucket. Great up and under move from Benjamin Donnelly, but unable to finish. Yeah, Miracle was there, set up for the charge, and he had to go around him. Oh, nice find underneath. And that's going to be a travel. However, I will say that's the second incredible pass from Sherla. He was the one that thread the needle the first time, yeah. and then that time bounce pass all the way underneath that should have resulted in a layup, but instead it goes back the way of the Spartans as they trail 26 to 35. Three yeah. minutes and 10 seconds to go here in the half. He's He's got a really good court vision, able to make some of those really tight passes. Limes will shoot the three, and that's good for Cooper Limes, his second three-pointer of the game. Just keep hanging around, man. Cut it to six. And that time, offensive foul as Seth Krause <laughs> oh. completely bowls over the defender. Donnelly saw that uh, they were going to pretty much made their mind up. They were going to drive down onto the block, and he just set up and held his ground. Official immediately calls the charge. And now some full court pressure for Manhattan as they work the full court man press. Kennedy's not in now, and you had to wonder. He's got to be licking his chops when he sees a full court press. And now the dash, Spartan turned the other way, and that is going to be re rejected by Miracle. And we're going to have a bump. Just and got too far underneath the Nate Cannon there. He just uh, drove under the basket and just found himself where he couldn't really even get a shot. And then running back down the court, the uh, chief player just stopped where he was, and Cannon ran right over him. And that's the unfortunate part about that foul is basically 70 to 75 feet away from your basket. Yeah. Now they get free throws. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not what you want. You do like the hustle, but got to be a little more court aware. Nice to hear a little bit of noise during that free throw. It's it been, is. It's been incredibly quiet so far. It has. Jim's really uh, starting. looks like it's starting to fill up a little bit on the opposite side. We went, we've went. we kind of gone back and forth today. Some of these teams uh, that care, have big programs, uh, when their t other teams are playing, they don't get a lot of people here. But now as the day is winding down, it looks like more and more are trickling in. So both free throws are missed, but an offensive rebound for the Chief, and then they lose the handle on it. A little too strong on the pass. And then that time, the ball was nearly saved by Kraus. But it's going to go back to the Spartans and some substitutions as Patrick White and Gabe Amarin check back in for Manhattan. I know things didn't go his way there, but I really like the hustle on Kraus. Well, he's making so many things happen. He's tipping every ball that gets near him. He's fighting on every rebound, causing havoc as much as possible. And Kennedy's back in for the Spartans. On the drive with the left hand, and that's going to be good for Donnelly. Great touch. Cuts it to four. And that is nearly tipped and stolen away by Limes. Good awareness from him to cut the pass. Well, he had it. Just went through his hands. So now two minutes to play in the half. As Krause will be working on the inside. Spins, puts it up short. Gets his own rebound. Three-pointer is going to be up. And that's good, nothing but net for Grant Amarin. Nice shot. He was waiting and spotted up. When you're a shooter, you've got to be ready to pull that trigger. And he had his feet squared. As soon as he got the ball, he knew he was going up with that one. That extends it back to a seven-point lead with just about a minute and a half left in the first half of play in this boys 18 and under 7A gold ball semifinal game. Kennedy almost threw it away there. Stop and pop jumper, no good for Dash. And that's going to be a foul on Kennedy. Oh, man, that's and number three. I that think. is a double whammy as it's his third foul of the half, about 90 feet away from the basket, and it's going to put the Chief back at the free throw line. Two shots, they're in the double bonus. 
Boy, they uh, Dash just keeps fighting and fighting, and the, when the game feels like it's like they are pulling away, it feels like Manhattan's going to keep building their lead. All of a sudden, you look up, and it's down to six, and it's down to four, and now it's back up to seven again with a chance to inch closer to a double-digit lead. And those fouls, man, those are crucial, not just because it's Kennedy, but you just don't have a lot of bodies to put in. Well, and just like that last game that we called where the Illinois crew had double-digit bonus in the first half, I think the Dash Spartans are going to have to make some adjustments going into the second half just to make sure that they've got enough bodies. Absolutely, and Coach Cannon's going to have his work cut out for him. It's tough losing Kennedy off the floor, but you can't lose him for the game. Not if you want a chance to advance. Second free throw is rolls around and short. Bowers comes down with the rebound. I am not sure what happened there. It looks like he had a jump stop about 90 feet away from the basket. The, the official said it was tipped, so we're just going to take his word for it. And now coming the other way in a two-on-one. Patrick White has it stripped and stolen away by Bowers. He's got a three-on-two coming back the other way. And that's going to be a travel. Oh, wow. I don't know what happened there to me. It looked like uh, the pass was a little errant, a little ahead of his player, but he had limes coming down the right side and just unable to do it. That might have been a makeup for what happened down at the other end. And that baseline jumper is no good. Rebound comes to Cannon. Oh, and that's good. They're going to call it on Cannon. They said he extended his arm, pushed off the defender. And that's the third foul on Nate Cannon. And because they had the ball, it's just a change of possession, not free throws. But, wow, the, pi the uh, fouls just keep piling up. Patrick White from the corner off the top of the backboard. And that's going to end up in the hands of Miracle. Suddenly the lead is double digits. Cannon short on the layup. Now coming back the other way is Manhattan. Boy, Final 20 seconds of the game. Nice feed inside to Miracle. And there's a little bit of contact, but they let that one go. Now coming up ahead to Cannon. He's going to flip that up. No good. Boy, you'd like to have seen him gather that in and, and just pass it to some one of his teammates coming up behind him. Instead, he tried to make a crazy shot and couldn't make it go. So final 10 seconds of the half. Patrick White. Gets it off inside to Kraus. He's going to go wait and pump it up and in. Good for Kraus. He has been all over and just hasn't been able to make it fall. And finally, as the half ends, he's able to drop it in and build that to their biggest lead, I believe, of the game at 12 points. And so back and forth action in the first half. Sees the Manhattan Chief lead 43-31. to We will take this halftime intermission and bring you the second half action right after this. When my body needs relief, I real time it. I'd like to introduce you to my knockout pain formula, real time pain relief. Its soothing lotion is rich in nature's ingredients and helps me manage discomfort day or night. Mmm, and it smells great too. From muscle strains to soreness to simple back aches and arthritis, real time it and knock out your pain. It works for me and it will work for you. Real time pain relief, it's a knockout.
Back here at Baptist Bible College here in Springfield, Missouri. Second half action underway in this boys 18 and under 7A gold ball semifinal. The Manhattan Chief have a commanding 43 to 31 lead as they continue to pound the rock inside. Great up and under by Cody Miracle. This Chief team, they've got a presence down low, whether it's bigs or whether it's just guys that can jump, and they are really starting to impose their will down there. And Miracle had 13 first half points. We'll see what he can continue to do in the second half. See if he can lead his Chief to a gold ball game tomorrow. Meanwhile, Kennedy with the big Euro steps lays it up and in. He was the leading scorer for the dash in the first half. Kennedy's got to be closing in on 20. He has really had a game. Three-pointer is going to be an air ball, but there to clean it up and put it back in is Aiden Miracle. Like the way the official could have called contact there, but he let it go as it did not affect the shot. Able to muscle that in. And that is 14 points for Kennedy. And this time Bowers flips it up. Hasn't had a lot of luck on his layups today. Yeah, he's had opportunities, but just not able to convert. In the corner, Patrick White is going to take a three. And that's good. Well, that lead, second triple. That lead starting to balloon now. And you got to think with the foul situation for Dash and uh, just trying to really deal with the opposing team's athleticism. You have your own, but you've got a limited bench and where things are starting to stack up against them. And I was just about to mention the Chief bench is running very deep right now. They've had a lot of success. As that time, it's going to be Sherla who's called for the foul. That's his second, which is going to send the Spartans to the free throw line. That's Donnelly. Let's see if uh, Dash can try to trim this lead. I mean, we're not even two minutes into this quarter, it's getting close to 20, and they've got to do something to stop this chief team. Manhattan has really just shown some explosiveness. Looked like both teams a little undisciplined in the first half early on, but then starting to get in their groove, started to feed it down low, take some outside shots, and see if Dash can use their speed. And there's a steal. They need some of those. And that's going to be Bauer who lays it up and in. Got to think if that hadn't gone, they would have called because you can't slap the backboard when the ball is going in. There's a walk. And just like you mentioned, a little bit of momentum now for the Spartans. And what was a 17-point game is now 13. And we'll see if Dash can cut that even further. Well, they seem to do that this entire game. They uh, Chiefs start to build a comfortable lead, and then Dash comes right back and just continues to cut it and see if they can do that here in the third quarter and keep it close. And now Kennedy will drive, and looks like that was blocked by Miracle, <laughs> and then re-stolen by Kennedy. Back-tipped it. And good feed underneath. And that big jump up on the backboard looked like it uh, caused a little bit of confusion there. Yeah. That was tough. That was a great pass, great patience by Kennedy. He waited for Cannon to get open, but then Cannon missed the shot. And... Uh, Missed opportunity there for Dash. And throughout the game, it just feels like if several of these layups had fallen, it would be a little bit of a different game right now. Yeah, Dash can get to the rim. I mean, they've shown that. They just have not finished. And so many times, that's the difference between a great game and a, just a mediocre game is you're able to get where you want to, but if you can't convert, it doesn't really matter. And now Kennedy weaves his way through the defense, loses the handle, but still holds on to it. Attacks, kicks it to the corner, Bowers is going to do his own attack, and that's going to be up and good. Oh, how did he get that to go? High level of difficulty difficulty compared to some of the other layups that he's unfortunately yeah. missed. Yes, exactly. That time, that was just being out of position. The Chief saw an opportunity. Down low was Eli Krause. He planted himself on that block, and Cannon was out of position there. Couldn't really do anything but put his hands up, and unfortunately he brought him down, and he fouled. And unfortunately, that's his fourth foul. Yeah, they they are definitely in some foul trouble. Don't be they do not want that to happen. They cannot lose somebody and see that bench that only has three players on it shrink down to two. And Cross misses the first half. Short on both. Kennedy comes down with the rebound. 50-39. They just keep chipping away and staying in this game, trying to keep it close. 
That time it was tipped and stolen away by White. He's got a three-on-one against Bowers. That's going to be up and put in <laughs> by Aiden Miracle. And his mind he was going to dunk it. The pass just wasn't, wasn't quite high enough. Good pass, but not if you're going to try to oop that one. And we've seen several players here this weekend athletic enough to dunk it. Oh, man, we've seen some good ones. That first day yesterday, crazy dunk. That three-pointer no good from Donnelly. A little bit of contact, but the official wisely lets that go. It's a good call. And now White is going to come the other way. Boy, even though Dash is in foul trouble, they are not stopping with the uh, reaching for the ball and trying to get the steals. And that ball is going to get <laughs> tossed up into the top <laughs> section. And they might have to get somebody to go up there. I'm not sure, but I, I think it's locked. We might have to make a phone call to get uh, somebody from BBC over here to get that ball. Our own Jeremy Caldwell is <laughs> sprinting his way over there to see if he can get it. <laughs> but I did see some people walk through there earlier, but I, I think they were BBC staff. Yes. And so it looks like we might either need to get another game ball or see if we can get somebody up there in the next couple of, of seconds. And meanwhile, there's going to be a substitution as Seth Krause checks in, as does Ethan Goff. Excuse me, Grant Ameren. Wonder if either team is uh, suspicious. They are going to just get a different basketball. Ah, oh, and then we actually see staff going over there to get it. But uh, yeah, they're going to stay with that one. <laughs> you can hear the referees joking. Great, Let's great see some job. hustle. There we go. All yeah. right. Thank you to that young lady. Great host here, at Baptist Bible College. She uh, probably didn't uh, come here tonight expecting to be receiving a round of applause, but. Because of her, we're allowed to continue this game with the same basketball. 13-point game as Kennedy works for the Spartans. Great pass to the corner. And that rolls around in and out. No good for Donnelly. Bullet pass. Boy, Donnelly, if he could have converted there, that would have been big. And Miracle takes it. No good. And last touch by Kennedy, so it's going to stay with the Chief. Well, that time... Kennedy was down low and had position, but just couldn't get his hand on the ball and knocked it out of bounds. Good feed inside for the alley-oop to Cody Miracle. So athletic. Just throw it up there and let your teammate grab it and put it in. Now Bowers working baseline. Completely denied by Miracle coming the other way. That was just good defensive pressure there. Did not foul, got his hand on the ball, and was able to come away with the block. And that time the stutter step is going to be called for a traveling violation. So Dash still hanging around. They're down 15 right now. you got to think that they can put points on the board quickly, especially with that speed. They have don't want to go into that fourth quarter, though, with that deficit getting closer to 20. Much rather... Have it at least down in the single digits so that you know in your mind you've it's attainable. That time Kennedy loses the footing and the ball up ahead to White. And he is going to lay it up and in himself. Boy, Bowers timed it, but he was unable to stop that shot. And the lead now to 17. On the inside to Biggs, finds Kennedy. Bowers will stop free throw line extended. No good. Rebound comes to Aiden Miracle. Haven't seen a lot of spot up uh, jump shots, and, and maybe that's, you know, you're, you're athletic, so you're, you're going to see less of those. But well, that might be the difference right now. You see the Chiefs starting to really drop those in. And that time, the good hustle from Aiden Miracle as he runs into his bench. That lead is up to 19 now. Boy, the dash in desperate need of some points. It seems like now that the Chief have kind of found a way to handle Kennedy a little bit, there hasn't been a lot going so far for Dash, as that's going to be an air ball three-pointer. And you can see some frustration and a little bit of resignation setting in for Dash. Yeah, Cannon, if he'd have, probably been a step closer to the three-point line, that wouldn't have been a bad shot. He was so far behind it. You don't really need to take those when you're down by 19 points. And now just the Chief getting whatever they want as that two-pointer by Miracle 
he just kind of waltzed in there and laid it in. Yeah, he can jump. He's got some jumps, and he just basically dropped it into the bucket, and that lead now at 21. And, boy, in your mind, I know it's just a number, but sometimes when that lead gets over that 20-point mark, your mind starts to play games on you, and you start to wonder, okay, is this even possible? We've only got two minutes left here in the third quarter. Um, Dash has the explosiveness, but as you, as you mentioned, they've been dealing with foul trouble. Now, they've, they've stayed away from it, only three fouls total in this half uh, for either team. But uh, just, uh, wow, they've got a lot stacked against them if they're going to be able to get back into this game. So we just want to take a quick reminder to let you know that this whole tournament, as well as the stream, is sponsored by Real-Time Pain Relief. If you haven't heard it from George Foreman, you're going to hear it from us. <laughs> and we also want to give a shout out to 417 Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. If you're here at the live stream court, they are located on the stage. We've got a trainer over there that will take care of you. And we also want to give a shout out to Verizon, who this morning when we were having some Wi-Fi difficulties have given our crew a device that allows us to stream with really high quality. Got to like that. I mean, we appreciate all the help. I'm uh, eyeing that uh, trainer's table down there. Man, a long day announcing. May have to uh, get the old back worked on tomorrow Maybe they morning. can also use some real-time pain relief <laughs> while you're on the trainer's <laughs> table. George talked me into it. That three-pointer from Cannon is going to be up no good. Rebound comes to Daniel Zachary, who just checked in for the Chief. Starting to get some playing time for some of the other guys on the bench. And now that three-pointer is going to be up and no good. Rebound comes to Cannon. Smooth touch. Thought he had it. Good-looking shot from Sherla. Under two minutes to play here in the third quarter, and the Manhattan Chief have a commanding 21-point lead. Good Down feed into Biggs, inside. lays it up and in. He loves it when you call him Biggs Papa. <laughs> it's easy to remember where, what position he is because we call him Biggs anyway, and... And that's his name. Wow. Drive and a great reversal from Aiden Miracle. The Miracle brothers really showing out here today in their pursuit of a gold ball championship tomorrow. Really think that the, you'd wonder why they haven't gone back more to Biggs down low because he's been able to put some buckets in down there. And even though they're playing a very athletic team and you don't always end up going to the traditional Biggs down low as another three sinks. They've well, just had trouble scoring here. And this might be one of those situations where when it rains, it pours, unfortunately, for Dash. This time, Bowers is going to take the three, and that's good. They're going to need a lot more of that here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he was set and ready to shoot, and so that was a good feed. He was able to catch it in his flow and just drop it from three-point range. And that ball on the inside lost by Zachary up ahead to Bowers. And it looks like Miracle thought about challenging it, but instead Bowers had enough separation. And five quick points for him gets yeah. it back under 20. I thought we were getting ready to see a major mid-air collision there, but it didn't happen. And that time the layup is up and in by Eli Kraus. And unfortunately, it's just been too easy inside for the Chief today. Lead is 21. Let's see if they can get it under 20. So now Kennedy kicks it back out to Bowers. He thought about it. Sidesteps, takes a three, nearly hits it. Instead, he's going to get three free throws as that foul was called on Eli Kraus. Bowers and Kennedy have to be so frustrating to guard because they're just they're fast. They've got great moves. They're athletic. And uh, that time, really, I, I feel like Bowers just created that foul because there was really not much that uh, the defender could do there to, to avoid the contact. First free throw up and no good from Bowers. As checking in for both teams, Aubrey Johnson comes back in for Dash. And Patrick White, well, after this free throw, they'll both be checking in. Yeah, he came off the bench, and Avery Johnson was, uh, or Aubrey Johnson, rather, really gave him some good uh, points. He muscled in a couple shots down low, hit a three outside, but we haven't seen a lot of him since early on in the game. And in the third quarter now, Bauer already has 10 points, looking for 11. And it'll stay at 10, but Johnson, who just checked in, will keep the ball alive, ultimately end up with the Chief, and that's going to do it for the third quarter of play. Mm. As we head into the fourth and final eight minutes, we see the Manhattan Chief with a 20-point lead, 67-47 over Dash. Final eight minutes back after this intermission. When my body needs relief, I real-time it. I'd like to introduce you to my knockout pain formula, real-time pain relief. Its soothing lotion is rich in nature's ingredients and helps me manage discomfort day or night. 
Mmm, and it smells great too. From muscle strains to soreness to simple back aches and arthritis, real time it and knock out your pain. It works for me and it will work for you. Real time pain relief, it's a knockout. Welcome back to Baptist Bible College and the second to last live stream of the day. This is the boys 18 and under 7A gold ball semifinal between the Dash Spartans and the Manhattan Chief. My name is Paul Gilmore alongside Scott Staten bringing you the final eight minutes of play to determine who will go on and face the winner of the Oklahoma City Storm and the St. Louis Blue Knights, which that game is coming up later as well. Boy turnover right off the bat for Dash. Not what you want when you're down 20 trying to make a comeback in eight minutes. And now Bowers coming the other way. Kennedy kicks it to Cannon for three. No good. Had it online, but just really struggled from outside today. And now White. They get it inside. And that shot is going to be up and good. First basket for Daniel Zachary. Pretty shot. You like to have that coming off the bench. And now Bauer sidesteps, lays it up and in. <laughs> up he and continues under. his tour de force on the offensive end. <laughs> Sliced right through there. Gave him just a little opening, but, man, he made it count. And that time there's going to be a foul called on Kennedy. That's his fourth. Got to be careful that they almost had a steal but they cannot afford to lose Kennedy or Bowers right now if they have any hope of coming back down by 20. And that's stolen away by Bowers. He's got Kennedy up ahead. Kennedy lays it up and in and one. Pretty play, and that was a great two-man break there as Kennedy was up ahead. Bowers made a beautiful bounce pass, put him in a great position to go in and get that shot and draw the foul. So Kennedy has a chance to add to his total with this clock stopped. And his free throw is good. Lead down to 17, and in comes some of the starters again. The Miracle Starting Brothers. platoon is back in, <laughs> including Seth Strauss. And Eli Krause, excuse me, the Krause brothers and the Miracle brothers coming in. That's two families you'd like to have in your program, huh? And that might have been the fifth. No, they're going to call an offensive foul oh, that wow. time on Aiden Miracle. Dangerously close for Kennedy. He is not slowing down at all, even though he's got four fouls. And now Bowers quickly finds... Cannon going the other way, lays it up and in. Finally gets it to go. Good to see that for him. And lead down to 15. And that's his first basket of the game, believe it or not. Yeah, he's he's not had any luck today on his shots. Oh. And that is actually going to be a foul called. Wasn't sure what the ref was going to whistle there for a second, but we do have a grab. And that is going to be on Bowers. That's only his third. Yeah, could have been a travel, but they said the contact caused the travel and now we've got Biggs is going to bump Miracle and that's Biggs's first foul fifteen point game that's a tough matchup for Biggs Miracle is so quick athletic trying to pull Biggs out from under the basket but he's going to Kind of keep one foot in the lane and one out. That's going to be a three-pointer up and good for Cody Miracle. Yeah, it's a tough matchup. He's almost like a stretch four or five. Can step out there and shoot the three, but can also just jump and dunk it. And that's 22 points now for Miracle. Kennedy works his way inside. No good. Rebound. Comes down to Sherla. Up ahead to White. And he's going to be fouled almost the end one. But that is going to be on Bowers, and that's Bowers' fourth. So both of the star guards for the Dash Spartans now have four fouls. 
Just 5.51 in the game to go, so they're, they're not going to stop being aggressive. But if they can keep themselves from reaching when they don't have to or, like you said, being 80 feet away from the basket and, and making unnecessary contact, just play smart. You'll be able to try to finish out this game and give your team a run. Otherwise, this Manhattan Chief team, they may be new and a surprise to some, but they have shown off today that they've got the horses to be able to play with some of the better teams here this week. And that was Eli Krauss who hits one of two free throws. Now Bowers coming back the other way. He's going to take it, kick it out to Cannon for three, and that's good. Nothing but net. Finally getting to drop, two in a row now. Maybe that'll get him started, and it's late, but if they're going to make a run, they're going to need some other people besides Kennedy and Bowers to come up with it, and there's a steal. And now Bowers has caught himself between three guys, lays it just short, and the Chief will come the other way. That's Great look on the inside. That's going to go back out to Miracle, who shoots a three. No good. Rebound to his brother, Aiden. He's going to put it up, and good. Yeah, you'd liked on that break, Bowers, you, you like his aggressiveness, but if he'd have maybe kicked it back to Cannon, he had three guys going up to try to block a shot. And that shot from Kennedy is up and good. Great touch. Well, these guards for Dash, you, you imagine if they had another scorer, they'd really be a tough team to knock out. And that's going to be good and one for Kennedy. Wow. Turned on the Jets and dropped in the bucket. And yet still, it has to be disheartening. You are playing with all your heart. You're making some runs, getting three-point plays. And yet you're still down by a significant amount. 14 points. Yeah, they put the points on the wrong side of the board. They're catching it up now. 75-61, short on the free throw. Good look on the inside from Miracle to Kraus, and they're going to call a walking violation. Yep, so Biggs and uh, Johnson collapsed on him there and caused the uh, turnover. And that's going to be Patrick White checking back in for the Chief. 14 points, not insurmountable. If you are Dash, they can put the points up on the board in a flurry. They've got speed, they've got athleticism, but, boy, they're running out of fouls to give and got to be really good on each possession now. And that's going to be a foul as Kraus bumped into Kennedy. Not quite a free throw situation, but one more foul by either team will put them in the bonus. And that could be crucial because when you can score and cut into a deficit with no time on the clock, that, uh, that makes it possible. So let's see. Let's see. This possession is going to be important. A deep three by Limes. Oh, and he hit it. Oh, he dropped the limes and the coconuts. <laughs> you were waiting for that one, weren't you? I was thinking about it, yeah. 11 points. Oh, man, they've got a chance to cut it to two and then a steal. And this is going to be a wide open layup for Bowers if he can get it. And that's going to be up and good. Where did this come from? They were down by 20 points, and now we look up with still half of this quarter left, and they're only down by nine. It's certainly a breath of life for the Spartans, but if they're going to do this, they need to do it on the defensive end like they do there, tipped away by Johnson. Another steal. Now Kennedy's on the full speed break up and in. Oh, oh. it's a seven-point game, and now Dash with all the momentum. Bowers runs up and shoves Limes in the back. Kennedy talking to his team saying, come on, let's go. We got this. We can do this. It seemed impossible. It seemed impossible. They had the foul trouble. They just really couldn't do anything to match the Chief. And all of a sudden, we're looking up at a seven-point game with just under four minutes to go. And it's been an incredible display from both teams. The Miracle Brothers for the Chief combined have 37 points right now. Wow. And on the other end, Bowers and Kennedy have the bulk of the points for the Spartans. Yeah, yeah we, we almost got to pull somebody, one of these uh, BBC uh, math majors in to come and count all those points. They've, they've created a lot of that with steals, um, causing turnovers. Again, they've got to be careful. You really can't take losing either Bowers or Kennedy right now, and they both have four fouls. So you got to be smart. No ticky-tack fouls. Just stay in position. Use your feet. And that is going to be nearly an annual on the other way. That foul is going to be on Johnson. That's his third. And doing just some quick math between Bowers and Kennedy. They've got 41. Not surprised. They have put them in in bucket loads today, and it's, been, it's come fast and furious. 
That first free throw is going to be up and good. Well, he's calm and he is smooth. He, uh, you, you couldn't even tell if this was a close game or not. The way he just steps up to the line, just makes his shots. And we wouldn't have said this about two minutes ago, but that actually is a big free throw. So it stops a little bit of the momentum from the Spartans as he knocks down both. Drains them both, and boy, just shows he is a complete player. And now the Chief put the pressure back on. Full pass up ahead, and that's going to be up. And <laughs> no good for Limes, but he's going to go to the line. So like you mentioned, ability to put some points on the board with, yeah. this, uh, with the clock stopped. Absolutely, and I, Limes, yeah, I mean, he had a legitimate shot there of making a three-point play. And that foul is going to be on Sherla. That's his third. And they're going to call it not on the shot. They're just, they said it's a one-and-one. So they must have called it on the floor. First free throw is up and no good for Limes. Mm, that and hurts. that's a backbreaker. Yeah, you got to take advantage of those. Still plenty of time, but you're down nine. I think the clock maybe didn't start on time. And here we go. Both teams are in the bonus. The... Uh, Scoreboard up top says it's a double bonus for Chief, but that is incorrect according to our count. It's just 17 fouls each, so both are just in the regular bonus. Johnson takes a seat on the bench. Maybe catch his breath for a final run. Down by nine. And now the Chief. Big three-pointer is going to be no oh. good, but that is a double killer as Bowers has now fouled out of the game, and that's going to give Miracle three foul shots. Goes over and shakes the hand of the opposing coaches, and wow, that, boy, that's a shot. You still you still got players. You still got guys out there. Kennedy looks in disbelief. It's so hard when you see a guy shooting a three and you want to try to at least contest it. Uh, you try to train your players to run to the side, uh, but it's, it's difficult to do, and when you get a, a good three-point shooter, they also know how to make you kind of run into them the way that they shoot, and... Uh, just couldn't avoid it that time, and now he's going to have to watch from the bench and hope that his teammates will be able to bring this home. The first free throw and second are no good. They hit the back iron and bounce straight up on both of them. Boy, they are leaving the door cracked. Dash Spartans, they were down 20 in this quarter. They've cut it to nine. And good on the third. Got every inch of the rim, but it goes down. And now coming back the other way, we've got a two-on-one, and that's going to be laid up and oh, no good. Oh, man. He almost got another three-point play, and I, I fear that for Dash that's going to be their story tonight is almost. We almost could do it. And that was set up really. I think Aubrey Johnson kind of sealed his man so that uh, his teammate Donnelly could run down there and have an open layup, but he drew the contact, could not finish the play. And for Sherla, that's his fourth foul. And was that an air ball? I did not see it hit anything. And so I am going to say yes. So like you mentioned, a game of almost and too many missed opportunities for the Spartans if they're not able to come back in this. Gets it back down under double digits. 3.36 to go. They've got time. But do they have the will? Do they have the points? And can they stay out of the foul trouble? Kennedy with his fourth, and you've got to keep him on the floor, you have to think. And that time we're going to have a foul on Johnson, which is going to send the Chief back to the free throw line, and that's the fourth on Johnson. Man, another player with four. That just, again, the circle just gets tighter and tighter on what you're able to do in terms of playing flawlessly. And that first free throw is good for a miracle. Missed his first two and then hit his last two. Second one is up and off the back iron, no good. Rebound is ripped down by Donnelly. Almost an offensive board and luckily for Dash, they were able to corral that one. And that time Kennedy flips it up and in. <laughs> oh, he's so good, so good. He now has 25. Back down to eight. Limes didn't see the ball. And Nebo is able, to, even with the contact, to come away with it. Big three-pointer for Cannon. No. Oh, he almost, again, almost had it. In and out of the rim. That would have cut it down to five. Couldn't get it to drop, though. 2.54 to go. And that is going to be the fifth foul on Kennedy. Oh, wow. And right, it was right in front of the Dash Spartans. Both players were pushing. 
but they're going to call it on Kennedy. Kennedy had hopes that they were going to call it on the chief player because he, they both were going for the ball, and he felt like he was pushed. Of course, the chief player felt like he was pushed. Dash coach Cannon arguing about the call there, but it's not going to change it. Kennedy in disbelief does not want to leave the court. But that will be his fifth foul. Oh, and you hate to see it go that way. You know he's not going to stop hustling. He's going to go over and, and ask what he did, and the official is going to explain it to him. He's doing it respectfully. And he is off the court. Doesn't like the answer, but there's really no good answer when you want to stay in the game as a competitor. Even if you did foul, you don't want to hear it. He, I believe he had an argument there, but also when you have four fouls, you just cannot risk it. And uh, that's what happened. And yeah. not sure, I guess, a technical foul here. Yeah, the ref just made the motion to the score table that there was just too much chatter. Yes. And that's tough. When you compete like that, you just you feel like you're right. You feel like you're in position. Ah, oh, just despondent now. And meanwhile, in the midst of all of that, Aaron Thatcher checks in for the Dash Spartans. Well, and there's still a game to be played. There's still 251, and you're you're only down nine. It's gonna be a tough uphill battle for sure. Now it's ten without your two scores, but. Right now, Bowers up, cheering on his teammates. Here's Kennedy saying, keep going, keep going. And another free throw drops, 82-71. Dash going to try to just dig down deep and somehow, without two of their stars, complete this comeback. They were down 20. They had cut it down to eight. Back up to 10 now, and then there's a block. And that's going to go the way of the Spartans. Wow, that's a tough call for a Chief. They had Miracle drive the lane, and the ball got knocked out of his hands and off of him. But then now Cannon loses the ball, and going to be a jump ball, going to go back to the Chief. Boy, that was tough. Cannon frustrated. Got to keep his cool. I think he thought it was a foul call. He went over to the bench. He's, he's taking his jersey off. Wasn't a foul. Yep, they're going to call a technical. What's well, so tough? These guys compete. They want to win so badly. And look like one official called a jump ball. Other official called a foul. And that ended the night for Cannon. And now Dash doesn't have any options. They fouled three players out, and that's their entire bench. And so now it's the five on the court. Going to take that last stand and see if they can, with apologies to the Miracle Brothers, if they can pull off a miracle. <laughs> Meanwhile, Grant Amarin has knocked down a bunch of technical free throws. That's four in a row for him, which increases the lead back to 13. Frustrating night when you are trying to come all the way back against a really good Manhattan Chief team. Calls don't go your way. That's often part of the game, especially when you're aggressive. Teams that steal a lot typically foul a lot, and that's been the case. That could have been five seconds, but they're going to call a foul, and I think now is that Johnson's fifth foul. That is Johnson's fifth foul. They're going to have to play with four players. That would not be the first time that I've seen this in tournament, worked with the girls team once and uh, finished that game. It was a double overtime, and both teams ended with four players and three players on the court. Was that his fifth? That was his fifth. Okay, they're just now realizing it. Yep, that was his fifth. So now... They're going to talk this over. I'm not sure that they're allowed to keep him on the court. And it's going to come down to the official scorebook if there's a, discre a discrepancy. Both teams talking it over. One scorebook has it with four. One has him with five. 
Not that we're any kind of official scorebook, but I do have Johnson with five as well. Right. But we'll see what the official scorebook says. And if there is a game where it's easy to lose count, this has been a flurry of activity. Both teams just playing at a fast pace. And they're saying the official scorebook does have him with five. Official's going to call him over, and that's the end of the night for Johnson. And suddenly that hill becomes much steeper to try to make that comeback. You were down 13. Not only did you lose your two top scorers, but now you have lost another player, and you've only got four on the court because that's all you've got on your roster here tonight. And Seconds. both free throws are missed. Rebound is ripped down you by Donnelly. everything to go your way from here on out. And nice flip pass from Donnelly in the corner. Three-pointer <laughs> no good. <laughs> that you could even get an open shot four on five. Pretty amazing. And that is going to be a foul called on Aaron Thatcher. And that's his first. So he is in no, <laughs> no issue of fouling out. No. Looking back, you might have wondered if put him in a little bit earlier just to take some of the foul pressure off of some of the other guys. But, wow, it's unusual. It's not often that you are able to look down at the court and you see as many players on the court as you do fouled out on the bench. And it's four and four. Well, and we spoke about that early in the in the first half, you know, when the Dash Spartans were starting to rack up some of the fouls, especially with their guards. It can happen. Whoa, nice move by Limes. His defender fell down, but then he is called for the charge. And that's going to be the third foul call on Limes. Frustrating night, but, you know, the Spartans have got to be proud of their effort. They played a really athletic team that uh, is going to – going to be a worthy opponent for either OKC or St. Louis tomorrow in the gold ball title game for 7A. And a lot of teams also, when it became 20-plus, would have wilted under that pressure as well. Credit yep. to them for fighting all the way back, making it at least an interesting game. Seven, if not five points in the fourth quarter. And as we hit just under two minutes to play, the Chiefs are going to try and run as much clock as they can. And we're going to have a bump foul. That's going to be on Limes. That's his fourth. The Dash Spartans girls team just trying to will their boys squad onto a victory. They're over on the sidelines just making a lot of noise, trying to help encourage them, but just running out of time and running out of fouls. I don't even know that you'd want to argue that foul, honestly, because at this point you've got to try to stop the clock, hope that they miss free throws. And again, like I said, everything, everything has to go your way. When you're playing four on five, you're not just playing four on five, you're playing four on five against a really good team. I won't say impossible, but I will say very, very improbable. And just want to make another note, if you're checking in for the nightcap, our next game is going to be the Lighthouse Chargers versus the San Marcos Panthers, as that three-pointer is no good. Rebound comes down to the Chief, and that's going to be a foul as well. And another technical, as Cooper Limes is going to foul out. Yeah, and this is where you just, you got to just calm your kids down. It's not worth it. It is frustrating. It's disappointing. But at this point, when you foul, it doesn't really matter. You don't have enough players. And I think Donnelly did a good job there of kind of escorting Limes over to the bench. Like, look, man, there's a minute and a half left. Right, right. We're going about to play five on three. Let's just call it a night and try again tomorrow. Yep. It is frustrating. And those three young men that are on the court still are going to have to give it their all for a minute 39. They're down 17. See some crazy things in these tournaments. And I'm sure in their minds they feel like uh, they were probably unfairly called on some of those fouls. But truly, they're an aggressive team. And when you're an aggressive team, you come up with a lot of steals. There's going to be a lot of contact. You're going to get called for fouls. And um, even if you don't agree with them, it's got to keep you cool. It's hard not to be demonstrative because you are given everything you got. You're digging down deep inside. You were down by 20. You went from a place that seemed almost hopeless to we could do this, and, uh, and now it's back to a 17-point lead, and you've only got three players on the court. So Kansas uh, 
or I'm sorry, uh, Dash rather, uh, when they look at Manhattan out of Kansas, the Chief, they are a worthy opponent. They're going to give somebody trouble tomorrow, whether it's OKC or St. Louis in the gold ball game. And Dash, may be able to walk away from here and keep their heads up high. They've still got more games to play, and, boy, they've shown they've got some athleticism. They've got some incredible players, and uh, we're going to be interested to see what happens uh, as they continue tomorrow because that's the great thing about basketball. Fouls don't carry over. And so tomorrow, got a clean slate. You might only have eight players, but you uh, will not have any fouls when that game starts. And so you just got to pick up and in that silver bracket, try to win some games. And second free throw is good for Kraus. And now the free throws for Emerin. I don't have any eligibility left and I'm not even sure I have the energy, but, uh, and I, I don't think, and now I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't become uh, eligible to play here for Dash, but you know, you, you feel for these guys, they've given their all, and, and also you can't take anything away from the Chief. They, they're a good team, they're a really good team, and boy, you'd like to see them both at full strength all the way to the end, just see what could happen. But uh, this one just kind of got away from it at the end, and truly once you hit that 20 point lead, it was going to be tough even with everything going right. So 139 to go. With everything that's happened in this game, it is back to nearly a 20-point game with all of the technical free throws and free throws from the fouls. It looks like the Dash are content to hang out in their tri triangle defense as the Chief pass the ball around, and we're yeah. going to work this clock out. Manhattan coach Casey Ameren, you could tell he told his guys, just let the clock go. Don't try to score. We've got five guys. They've only got three, and let's, let's and just I, walk away and let the clock wind I out. love the hustle from Donnelly there. He decided instead of just sitting it out, he's going to make <laughs> these guys pass it around. Yeah, listen to the crowd. They like the hustle. So once again, programming note coming up next, the Lighthouse Chargers and the San Marcos Panthers. That's going to be the nightcap. It's supposed to be an 8.30 start, a little bit behind. So hopefully you guys got some coffee or something in you, as that's going to be Scott Staten and Jeremy Caldwell on that call. And then you'll be back bright and early at 8 o'clock tomorrow. Golden Wednesday. <laughs> it's going to be fun. So just about 30 seconds left in this game, as the Manhattan Chief are going to advance to the gold ball game and face the winner of Oklahoma City Storm and St. Louis Blue Knights tomorrow. And kudos to the Dash Spartans for the game that they played as well. And that's going to be a foul called on Aaron Thatcher. Yeah, he he had to call it there because he, it was a hack. And, I mean, you, you know, you like the hustle. To be fair, I also love the ref's consistency as well. Yeah. You, the last thing you want is for something to get a little bit out of hand at the end of the game. And not, not that that's your right. anything by that no, foul. No, right, absolutely. But I do appreciate the ref's consistency. Those guys have done a great job throughout this whole tournament. And a couple more free throw attempts for Kraus. And that rebound is going to come down to Donnelly. That long three is going to be no good. If he'd have hit that, I think the house would have come down. I think so, too. <laughs> Those were the shots that Steph Curry and Dame Lillard were taking during the All-Star game. Yeah, yep. And that is going to do it for this boys' 18 and under game. From Paul Gilmore and Scott Staten, we want to thank you for tuning in. Once again, coming up, the San Marcos Panthers and Lighthouse Chargers right after this short intermission.